Hello everyone, welcome to Hamweights class. My name is Tyler. Today we are going to be focusing on the total body. We're going to be starting down at our ankles and our legs, working all the way up to our shoulders. For this class, I suggest you grab, of course, hand weights. Always have your bottle of water with you. I always have my trusty bottle of water with me. Um, use, it's good to stay hydrated, and I'm going to be doing that today. And I hope that you do as well and you have something to drink. Um, this is going to be a fairly high intense class. Um, we're going to be giving you pretty long breaks, but there's going to be a lot of work in between those breaks. So be sure that you do whatever you can. Uh, don't tire your to yourself out too quickly. Uh, try to take your time also with your weights. If you do not have hand weights available, please grab yourself some soup cans, uh, maybe a half gallon of milk, anything you have available you can use. You're also, uh, uh, you also are able to use multiple sets of weights. I'm just going to be using one set of weights that I've got next to me for my whole body. You're free to use multiple sets and try different uh, weights for different muscle groups. So let's get started with our warm. Let's start off with a march. Make sure you're sitting tall in your chair, shoulders back, activating the core, trying to lean against the backrest of your chair. This is going to be a 30 minute class. So be ready for a 30 minute workout. If you need a sweat towel or anything like that, make sure you have that available too. If you need breaks beyond what I'm giving to you, please hit pause, take the amount of breaks that you need, and then you can continue. Nice thing about having this on YouTube is you can stop it whenever you need to, and then pick it up when you are ready to go again. Let's take some bigger steps, a little bit slower this time. Also know that there's a lot of muscle groups we're going to be using, especially shoulders, that can be quite difficult um, to do for these exercises, especially if you only have one set of weight, some um, moves, the weight may be too heavy for you, that's okay, please feel free to do whatever you can, or completely skip the move altogether, that is okay as well, and then you can continue on our next exercise. All right, let's work our hips and a little further forward in your chair. So sitting up nice and straight, lifting one leg up in the air, rotate it over, set the ground, and drag it back. If you'd like to advance this a little more, you can also lift on the way back as well. Make sure you're doing all these exercises pain-free. If anything does hurt, please go to regression and try this move. If it still hurts, don't step out as far. Just little movements will be just fine. Please do whatever you can. Last one, first side. Excellent. Take a break here for a second. Let's go to our calf raises. Sitting up nice and straight, lifting up the toes, activating your calf muscle on the back of your legs. Try to hold up for about a second and then come back down. If you do not have a set of hand weights with you, as I mentioned before, but you do want to get one, you can get them from Amazon, Walmart, just about anywhere you can get a set of hand weights. Uh, price is going to go pretty much a dollar a pound. That's going to be very consistent almost everywhere you go. So if you get five pound weights, it's going to go five dollars per weight. A couple more here is three, two, and one. Excellent. Let's lift the toes now. Activate the anterior tibialis on the front of your lower legs. Try to speed up a little bit, go a little bit faster. There's five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. Lift up on the toes again. Reactivate the calf muscles. That's going to not only, as it says, activate the calf muscles because the calf raises, it's also going to stretch that anterior tibialis and relax a little bit after that exercise. Excellent. And break. Let's move to our lower back. 
Bring the arms up in the air as high as you can. Take a nice deep breath in and come down to the ground as low as you can go. If you're able to come all the way to the ground, fantastic. Try to let your body hang, relax, take some deep breaths. If you're unable to come all the way down to the ground, rest your elbows on your knees and continue breathing. Try to really relax during this exercise. Take some deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Excellent. Roll back up nice and slow. Good. Let's go to some arm circles or up the shoulders. We're going to do plenty of shoulder warm up, those being the most sensitive muscle in the upper body. So arms out to the side and let's start with some circles. Excellent. In the other direction. Good, we're going to continue with the circles going forward. Now we're going to continually get bigger with our circles. So we'll start with medium circles, not too big, not too small. We're going to gradually get a little bit bigger. And go as big as you can. Big circles, really activate those shoulders, really warm them up. If this is painful at all, decrease the size of your circle. There's three, two, one. Excellent. Relax your shoulders down. Take a break here for a second. We're going to do the same thing now backwards. So arms out to the sides again. And we're going to go reverse now, starting with decent circles. Again, not too big, not too small, something comfortable. And then slowly start getting bigger and bigger with your circles. So you get as big as you can go. Do a couple repetitions of this. Shoulders are going to start feeling sore. They're going to start warming up. That's a good thing. Here's three, two, and one. Excellent. Relax. Let's do some shoulder circles now. Try to go full range of motion. Pull back as far as you can. Come forward. Round them as much as you can. I already have pre-rounded shoulders, as you may be able to tell. So forward is nice and easy for me. Back, on the other hand, that's not so good. Let's go reverse. If you feel any cracks and pops while doing this, or hear any, that's perfectly fine as long as they are not painful. If they hurt, please do smaller circles. If it continues hurting, then please opt out of this move. Take a break here for a second, give yourself a drink of water, and then we can continue. Excellent. And relax. Go ahead and take a quick water break, and we will continue. Excellent. All right. Let's grab those weights. We're going to start on our lower body, working our way up. So weights on the knees, sitting forward, sitting up nice and tall, shoulders back, chest up, activate the core. And we're going to start off just like we did our warm up with a march. This time, have some resistance and do a weighted march. Now, the gym that I work for here at Oakwood has some weights. And I happen to wear the right color shirt today because I got weights to match my color shirt. That makes me feel pretty good. There will be a number of exercises where there may be, I may be able to do more reps than you can. You may be able to even do more reps than I can on these videos and what we're going to be doing. Please feel free to do more or less than what I'm doing. Again, do what you can. And as Tony Ward says for those who watch P90X, do your best and forget the rest. Excellent. Take a break here for a second. We're going to go into some single leg marches with holds. So what I'd like you to do is one leg at a time. If you feel really strong today, you can double up your weights. I'm not going to. I'm going to keep mine separated. So if you want to, as a progression, you're free to double up your weights. I'm going to stick with the normal general move and then you can uh, progress it from there if you like to. So single leg march, don't let your foot touch the ground on the way down. Keep it just above the floor and lift. We're going to do 10 repetitions. There's five, six, seven, eight, 
Nine on this last one. Hold it up in the air. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And march again. Don't let that foot touch the ground. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Excellent. Relax. Switch sides, same thing. Ten repetitions, ten second hold, ten more repetitions. Here we go. Do not let your foot touch the ground. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hold it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten more repetitions. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Excellent. Take a break here for a second. Well done. Good work. Good quad work on that one. Now we're going to move, continue with the legs to our calf muscles. We're going to do some calf raises just like we practiced in the warm up. This time, if you'd like to, double up your weights on one leg. We're going to do one leg at a time, just like we do with our single leg march. This time you're going to lift up on your toes, lift your heel off the ground, activate the calf muscle, and come back down. I would suggest this one since calves are usually pretty strong, doubling up your weights. Now if you're using multiple sets of weights, grab something that's a little heavier than what you would have used for maybe bicep curls or shoulder presses. Not as heavy as what you maybe just use for your quads. Quads are pretty strong, calves are very strong though, so grab, grab a decently heavy weight. Don't grab something too light. You want to make sure you get a good workout with your calf muscles. You want to really feel these muscles working. Alright, take a break for a second. Let's go just hold. Lift up and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. We got four more of those. Relax down, lift up again. Five, four, three, two, one, relax down, lift again, hold, five, four, three, two, one, relax down, lift again, hold, five, four, three, two, one, and two more, five, four, three, two, one, last one, five, four, three, two, one, and relax down, excellent, if you got double up weights, Take them both, switch sides. If you're just doing one, we're going to move over to the other leg. Lift me up again on your toes, lift the heel off the ground, activate the calf muscle, and come down. We're going to start off with some repetitions. So your last one. Excellent. Take a break here for a second. We're going to go into those five, five second holds again. So go ahead and lift up on the toes. Hold it. Five, four, three, two, one. And relax that lift again. Hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Lift again. Hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Two more. Five, four, three, two, two, one, relax, and last one, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Excellent, separate the weights again, and we're gonna to move to our hip muscles, also still activate the quads on the top of the leg here. We're gonna do our step out, so both legs at the same time, stepping out, stepping in. This is gonna be quite difficult to do, so if this is too difficult, this may be difficult to keep yourself up, and you're gonna to wanna to lean back, Please take one leg, lift up, rotate, bring it to the ground, drag it back, just like we did on our warm up. Continue with this move as a good regression for our step ups. So you can do the step ups and activate your core, keep yourself standing tall. Go ahead and do the double leg step ups again. If this is too difficult, one leg at a time, lift and rotate. Last few. Five, four, three, two, 
and one. Excellent. Good work. Take a break here for a second. Make sure you're breathing the whole time. Don't hold your breath during these exercises. You want to continue to breathe, supply your muscles with oxygen, so that way you uh, lift, lessen the amount of lactic acid build up with the proper amount of oxygen to those muscles. That way you're not going to be as sore tomorrow and your muscles won't be as sore while you're exercising. All right, let's move to our upper body. We're going to start with our back and shoulders. For our back and shoulders, we're going to do three back loops, three shoulder loops. We'll be back, shoulder, back, shoulder, back, shoulder. And then we will take an extended break for about 30 seconds so that you can rest, catch your breath, and get yourself a drink of water. Now, if any of the exercises are too difficult, um, maybe right now, something you want to build up to, something you need more time with breaks in between, please press pause in the video. Do whatever you need to do, and I will show you proper modifications as best I can, so that way you can participate as much as physically possible. So let's sit forward as far as you can on the chair. Let's start by separating the legs. We're going to start with a back move. We're going to start with my favorite. We're going to do some lawn mowers. So taking one weight, you can kind of rest on the ground. Rest it on your leg where it's out of the way. You're going to place your elbow on your leg. Other weight is going to come down to the ground. Keeping your back straight, neck straight, so that way you form a straight line. Pulling up, nice, slow, controlled. Keep that elbow close to the body. Come back down and pull up. Now what I want, what I want you to avoid doing is yanking that weight up. That could cause injury. So nice, slow, and controlled. Try to keep your upper body stable, just moving your arm and shoulder. And the last one. Excellent. Sit back up. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Now resting your other arm on your leg. Weight down to the ground again. Pulling up nice, slow, controlled. Keeping that elbow close to the body. Down to the ground. Pull up. Just like you're starting a lawnmower. Now when it's snowing, these are snow blowers. When it's fall, these are leaf blowers. All of which have the pull cord unless you have the electric start. If you do have an electric start or anything to use, we're going to pretend you don't. And we're going to go back to the pull start, the good old fashioned pull start. Let's do five more. And the last one. Excellent. Sit back up. Good. Get back centered on your chair, still keeping your back up backrest, sitting nice and tall. And we're going to move to our first shoulder move. We're going to do some overhead presses. Weights up along the shoulders, palms facing towards your head. Now you can turn out here. This is going to constrict the shoulder muscle a little bit. It may cause more pain than it will if the weights are facing towards your head. Let's go ahead and press up overhead as so you can. Try to bring weights more to the center at the top. Come back down. We got four more. There's three, and last one, four. Excellent. Relax down, take a break for a second. Good work. We're going to go to our back again, and we're going to be doing some reverse flies. This is going to be the most difficult back move that we do. So we're going to do this one now, and the last one will be a little bit easier, so that way we don't end with the most difficult one, give you a little bit of break in between. So for this one, we're going to sit as far forward as physically possible in your chair, feet sticking out in front of you a little bit further, so a little bit past where my knees are, so that way I have plenty of room underneath my legs. Now what this is going to look like is leaning over, weights on the legs, you're going to come up, you're going to squeeze your shoulder blades, keep those arms bent just like you're doing a fly. So a fly would be in front, open chest, Close chest. 
So now we're doing that backwards. This is going to be our movement here. Now I won't be able to go up as high because my weight's going to be heavier, but I really want you to focus not on how high you can get your arms, but on squeezing those shoulder blades and working those inner scapula muscles. So let's start. Lean over, hinge at the hips, keep the back straight, shoulders in place, weight down to the ground, coming up, squeeze shoulder blades and come back down. Do six more. And the last one. Excellent. Sit back up. You should feel those inner scapula muscles working. Some of your lower and middle trap as well activating. That's kind of where those same muscles are located for your erector spinae muscles and your rhomboids. Good work. Let's go to our shoulders again. We're going to do some shoulder abduction. This is going to be the most difficult move for our shoulders. Weights are going to be down at the side. You're going to lift up even with your shoulders. Anything above, this can cause injury. So try to keep even with your shoulders and coming back down. Now, the best thing to cue on this move to think about is your upper trap here where your neck is. If this is hurting, now it's going to hurt a little bit with this move because you are activating your upper traps just a little bit. If this hurts a lot and you don't feel it here in your deltoids, it means you're lifting your shoulders too much, squeezing your upper trap, and that's going to cause a little bit of injury and some added soreness that shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be there that I want to help you avoid. So for that reason, if you're feeling it a lot up here in your neck and in your upper trap, let's take a deep breath. <sighs> Relax your arms down to the side, plop your shoulders down, and then lift. What that's going to do is it's going to help focus on here and you're not going to lift your shoulders up as much while you're lifting. Again, don't go above shoulder height. We're going to do eight repetitions of these, then we're going to do a couple of holds. Waist down the side, palms facing towards the chair, lifting up even with the shoulders, and back down. we got four more of these. Almost done. Three more. Two more. You got it. Last one. Excellent. Take a break here for a second. All right. Back down. Arms to the side. Palms facing towards the chair. And we are going to do three three-second holds. Please do this as best you can. If this is too difficult, please just do repetition just like we did and try to do five more. That's not going to take the same time as our three three second holds. If you can do the holds, lift up any with shoulders. Here's three, two, one, relax. Down, two more. Three, two, one, relax. Down, last one. Three, two, one, and relax. Down, set the weight on the legs for a second. <sighs> Good work, excellent, well done. We have one more back move, one more shoulder move. We got biceps and triceps and your workout is going to be complete. Let's go to our back one more time. Sitting straight up in the chair, feet close together this time because the weights are going to be on the outside of our legs instead of in the middle like the last two. Again, hinging at the hips, keeping back and shoulders straight, weights on the side, we're going to do some rows. Pull the weights up, keep, them, keep the elbows close to the body, squeeze the shoulder blades, Come back down, pull up, squeeze. Try to really focus on keeping those elbows close to the body and squeezing the shoulder blades. Let's do five more. Three, two, on the last one, hold it. Three, two, one, and relax. Excellent, good work. We've got one more shoulder move. We're going to get right into it. Weights together on your lap. We're going to raise the weights up, keeping them below chin height, like the elbows rise up in the air. Don't let the weights bend. Keep them flat and come back down. This is going to focus only 
on those deltoids just like the last move did. Again, weights together, lift up, and come back down. This is the same idea as doing an overhead press. There's a lot less chance for injury, and you can usually use heavier weights a little bit easier than you can if you're pressing overhead. We're doing seven more. Seven, six, five, you got this, four, three, two, and last one. Excellent, and relax. Take a break for a second, take a nice deep breath, breathe a little bit, get yourself a drink of water. We're gonna take about a 30 second break. Now for time reasons, I'm not gonna take the full 30 second break. I'm gonna ask that you pause the video and give yourself as much time as you need before we start again with our biceps and triceps. For our next moves, we're gonna be doing two bicep and two tricep moves. So we're gonna start with our bicep, we're gonna start with a basic curl, and then we're gonna get a little more advanced. So arm to the side, palms facing in front of you, keeping your upper arm steady and not letting them move. If you let your upper arm move, I'm instantly activating my shoulders with this swing and I'm almost completely eliminating my full bicep work. You're still gonna get a little bicep work, but not as much as you would as if you kept your upper arm still. So again, sitting up straight, shoulders back, upper arm still, flexing the elbow, bring the weights up, and come back down. We got six more of these. Here's your last one. Excellent, good. We're gonna go straight into our first tricep move. Turning to one side of your chair, again, either resting the weight on your leg or on the ground, we're gonna use the arm furthest away from the back rest of the chair. So in this case, our exterior arm. Bringing the weight up, elbow up, kicking back. This is called a tricep kickback. That's why I say kicking back. You can also keep your arm straight and press back. If you go to this, Regression of the move, please don't swing your arm. This is gonna be more shoulder work than triceps. So straight down your side, press back. Straight down the side, press back if you can. Bring the elbow up and kick back. And here's three. Two and one. Excellent. Turn to the other side of the chair. Again, now we're going to be using the other arm. Should be the arm furthest away from the back rest of the chair. Again, keeping the arm straight and pressing back or bring the elbow up and go to the tricep kickback. For this move, just like the bicep curl, we want to keep this upper arm stable, just flexing the elbow. We got two more and last one. Excellent. Back to center again. One more bicep move, one more tricep move. We're going to stretch and you are going to be done. You're so close. You're doing fantastic. Keep up the good work. Arms down at the sides again. We're going to do a different type of bicep curl. These are going to be quite difficult, so please do as much as you can. These are called 21 salutes or triple sevens or lucky number sevens. I've heard all different kinds, so whatever name you want to call it, you can call it. We're going to do seven curls, hold at 90 degrees for seven seconds, seven more curls. Here we go. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. On this one, come down halfway, hold it. Don't drive your elbows into your sides, try to let your biceps activate. Four, 
five, six, and seven. Seven more curls. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. On this last one, do one more hold for me just for good measure. Hold it 90 degrees. Three, four, five, six, seven, and relax. Excellent. Should feel those biceps burning a little bit. Good work. We got one more tricep move. Now this tricep move is going to involve some shoulder work. If this hurt when pressing overhead, or it's something you maybe aren't able to do, for this tricep move, the best regression is to turn and go into that tricep kickback just like we did the first time. We're still gonna be working that same muscle for the tricep, so no matter what move you do, you're still gonna be working that muscle very, very well. So please choose the one that works best for you. We're gonna use one arm, one weight. So you're gonna get either set the other way on your leg or on the ground. This weight is gonna go over the same shoulder as the arm that's on. My other arm's gonna go on my elbow to make sure it stays in place and doesn't, sag, uh, doesn't sag too much. You're gonna press up overhead Bend the elbow, come down, try to keep the upper arm as still as you can. Got three more. It's three, two, and one. Excellent. Switch arms, same thing. Again, if you have shoulder pain, pain, please turn to one side and do those tricep kickbacks again. Here we go. We've got eight on this side. Excuse me, ten on this side. Here we go. Last five. Five, four, three, two, and last one. Excellent, and relax. Great work, everyone. We're done with our workout. Now we gotta cool down and stretch. Please take some deep breaths, relax, and remember that every stretch we do should be pain-free. If any stretch hurts at all, that means you're overstretching your muscles, um, and your muscles are tightening up to make sure they don't overstretch. So make sure you're all just feeling a light stretch on everything we do. If it is painful, I will try to show you the proper progressions and regressions to make this feel as good as possible. Go ahead and take your weights, set them on the ground. We are done with them. I'm going to get mine completely out of the way so that we have plenty of room around me. We're going to start with our lower body sitting way forward in front of your chair as far as you possibly can comfortably. Lean back into backrest, take one leg, pull it into your chest. This is going to be stretching our quads and our glutes. If this is too much of a stretch, sit up and pull your leg in. This is going to be less of a stretch than if you lean back, especially for the glute muscles. Take some deep breaths. Relax. You all did fantastic today on hand weights class. I do plan on making a workout eventually with hand weights that has to do with different sets of weights, uh, different lower repetitions and also using uh, different weights as well. I'll go ahead and switch. Same thing, other side. I want to give you all a class that we can use different weights for different muscle groups so that way if you also are using separate weights and not just one set of weights like what I was doing, um, then you have something to follow along as well and see what that will look like as the best example I can give you. Excellent, relax the leg down. Sit up straight again, shoulders back, chest up. Make sure you're not sitting against the back of your chair. The next one, we're going to take our heel, place on the ground. I do see that my foot's a little bit out of the screen here, but please try to follow along as best as possible. Heel on the ground, pull the toes back towards you to activate the calf stretch. Chest up, shoulders back, hinge at the hips, lean forward. You're going to stretch out your hamstrings back here, all the way down to your calf muscle. Hold this here. Continue breathing. Relaxing. Excellent. Point the toes away from you now. Keep leaning forward. Leg is still straight out in front. What pointing the toe away does is it almost completely eliminates the calf stretch. Focuses more on our anterior tibialis. 
and allows us to, have, to stretch our hamstrings more if your hamstrings are unflexible like mine are. Excellent, let's switch sides, same thing. Again, heel on the ground, pull the toes back towards you, hinge at the hips, chest up, lean forward just enough to where you feel a light stretch. Again, this should be completely pain-free. Excellent, point the toes away from you now again, still leaning forward, keeping that knee as straight as you can, focusing more on anterior tibialis and more on hamstring than calf. Excellent, sit back up. We're gonna to go to our next stretch, it's gonna be the most difficult stretch, this will be our hip stretch. I'm gonna show you a couple modifications that you can do to adjust this a little bit to what feels best for you. So the main move is gonna be placing your foot on top of your opposite knee, holding this position. If this is too difficult for you to do, or you've had a hip replacement or a hip pain, please try crossing knee over knee and leaning forward. You're still gonna be stretching that piriformis hip muscle. If this is still too much for you, please go ahead and cross your ankles, pull back, and lean forward, hinging at the hips. You're gonna feel a very light stretch in that hip muscle. Please choose the modification that feels best for you. Hold it, take some deep breaths, and relax. Couple more seconds. Excellent. Relax down. Again, choose the modification out of the three that works best for you. Go ahead and switch sides. If you'd like to make this a little more difficult for those who are more flexible than I am, please get in the main position here with foot on top of the opposite knee and then hinge at the hips lean forward, even pressing down the knee a little bit is going to be okay. Whatever is comfortable for you, that you can get as much stretch as you need. Excellent. Relax down. Let's move to our upper body. Let's start with our shoulders. Arm out in front of the body. Bring it across. Elbow straight. Take your other arm. Pull it in for a little bit of an added stretch. seconds make sure this is completely pain-free good switch sides same thing arm out in front across the body and hug it in good and relax two more stretches bicep and tricep and you will have completed hand weights class. Arm out in front, palm facing the ceiling, other hand's going to pull down on your fingertips. This is going to be stretching forearm and bicep. If you need more of a stretch than this, please raise your arm up in the air just a little bit and you're going to feel more of a stretch all the way up your arm. Please find a place that feels comfortable for you. Please only pull on your hand as far as you can comfortably. Don't overstretch by pulling too hard on your hand. Good, switch sides, same thing, palm to the ceiling, pulling down on the fingertips. Good, and relax down. Last stretch can be a tricep stretch, just like the last overhead press that we did with the triceps. You're gonna take same arm over same shoulder, pushing on the elbow, or pulling overhead if possible. Hold this position as best you can. We'll be stretching the back of the arm here for the tricep. Excellent, and switch sides, same thing. Same one over, same shoulder, pushing or pulling on the elbow. and relax down. Good work everyone, thank you for joining me for Handways Class. Again, my name is Tyler. Please continue to watch our YouTube channel if you like what you see. We'll continue to post new videos for you as often as we can. And please check out Savannah's videos as well for some adaptive yoga, relax and stretch, resistance bands, and much more to come. Have a great day everyone. We'll talk to you all later.